Good morning everyone and welcome to the Passionate Piscator Fishing Channel. Today I'm on the banks of the Kennet and Avon Canal in Devizes. It's been a fair old journey getting here, but behind me, as you can see, yep, here are the famous cane locks. Uh, but once behind me are a series of 16 locks out of the 29. Today I'm here to really, really get into what this channel is about. Well, what I'm trying to make it about, and that is angling, wildlife, and well-being. I'm going to be fishing today for as many different species as I possibly can. I'm going to be looking out for wildlife and anything that's about beautiful kingfishers and insects and bugs and plants, anything I can find. And it is definitely about my well-being today. Uh, I suffer with depression and stress and particularly anxiety and today <laughs> I feel very very anxious because I'm going to be meeting I believe 17 other anglers here and we're going to be having a little competition to see what fish we can catch um, particularly the mini species gudgeon and ruff and anything like that anxiety levels I've just got here anxiety levels are way high but uh, as you can see I'm Positive and perky, <laughs> probably a bit manic, I don't know. But we're gonna meet, meet them a little bit later on. I'm gonna have a walk down here before uh, the competition starts and have a look at what the water's like and maybe uh, see if I can spot some sneaky early wildlife. Before I start though, it's taken a long while to get here um, and I'm just going to check my rods. I was at the bus station and I picked up <laughs> my collection of rods. I've got a couple of rods here with me today and um, they got wedged behind a chair and when I, when I went to pick them up, when the, the bus arrived, I heard uh, the, the sound an angler doesn't want to hear a little bit of a noise. Now I'm hoping nothing too dramatic has, has happened. Um, this bit of the rod looks absolutely fine. Let's have a look at these little bits. Yeah. Ah. There we go. This is very, very sad indeed. Uh, luckily, I bought myself a feeder rod. I am gutted, absolutely gutted. <laughs> oh, this, this rod means so much to me. This is, uh, or was, I should say, the JW Young Nottingham Cast River Fishing Rod. Uh, it's a fan it was a fantastic rod. Um, it has three eyes, look, one, two, for perfect the center pin reel casting but sadly it looks like it's a goner oh man talk about well-being guys you want to uh, get into a nice a nice day's fishing and start it off with a lovely bit of depression start it off with a nice crack in your uh, your fishing rod <laughs> your your one prized possession fishing rod uh, this rod was recommended to me by a friend of mine um, not a close friend before I mention his name an acquaintance shall we say an acquaintance of mine one mr. John Wilson um, and any anglers out there will know that name how special that man is was he passed away not so long ago very sadly um, it's like, I mean, I could try and replace it. But this rod is like gold dust. They do not make it anymore. So maybe I can get it fixed. Maybe I can get it fixed. However, I do have a feeder rod with me today. I forgot my feeders typically, but I can use it as a float rod. I'm pretty uh, versatile like that. And I'm just going to check that now to see if this has made it out. 
all it was is um, I, I lent it up against a chair in the bus station and um, the bus turned up unexpectedly quite early and I went to pick it up and it just got wedged between the chairs and I heard that sickening noise as I mentioned it's a very very fine rod anyway oh well let's remain positive shall we as it's going to be a good day we're meeting lots of new people lots of new friends maybe they'll have <laughs> a spare float rod who knows um, maybe I can use it for the day and I tell you what you never have a bad day fishing even if you break your prized rod the most special rod you own <laughs> can you tell I'm a bit gutted I'm probably gonna have a bit of a cry in a minute is that that's sad isn't it but I'm not gonna do it for you guys but I might just have a little tear in a moment you never know maybe I can get it fixed who knows who knows oh I don't know it's a massive great big swan walking up the path here please don't please don't attack me I don't need this today <laughs> I don't need to I'm already hampered myself at the beginning of a competition hello I'm not gonna yes yes please leave me alone uh, <laughs> oh, yeah so weird Ooh. Anyway, today's about battling some anxiety. Um, I'm always a proponent for how fishing helps people's mental health, um, whether it's depression or stress or anxiety or any other one to that matter. Um, it's the ultimate peace of mind, assuming your fishing rods don't snap. Uh, and um, I, I really struggle with anxiety, which will probably surprise some people who actually know me. Uh, I was a barman for um, three and a half years, and you'd think, God, that's like one of the most social jobs you could possibly have. But trust me, every single shift before I turned up, I would be stricken with anxiety. Even though, if I knew I'd have a great shift and I'd see all my friends and, you know, have a laugh, I was still incredibly anxious. Um, I remember, I mean, I remember working there and every day I'd have to have a little, I'd get there, have a little walk around the park just to, you know, get out the old anxiety, go through the door. Um, and once I was there, I was absolutely fine, but anxiety is is crippling sometimes. For me, sometimes people will say, oh, Steve, come out, come out and join us and go to the pub or what have you. And I just, I just make up some lame excuse sometimes that I can't, I'm busy, you know. It just, you know, it, it's, it's really hard uh, to, to get over it sometimes. And you miss out on so much, even though you really want to. You just cannot go out. You can't face being around large groups of people. Um, it's really, really difficult. Um, and one of the best things about angling is, you know, it, it can be quite a solitary sport. So you can sit there and don't have to worry about other people. <laughs> um, you can enjoy that me time. Um, but if you are a fisherman, it's a fantastic social lubricant. Fishing is one of the most popular sports around. So many people do it. Or, you know, whether they do it as a sport or a pastime or just a little hobby or something. Everyone, well, not everyone, of course, but most people have been fishing or know someone who's been fishing and you can join any conversation with, oh, I've just been fishing. And usually um, that gets the old social lubricant going. It's, and once you've found something like that you have in common, it makes it so much easier to um, get over that anxiety of talking to other people and being around other people. Um, I don't know anyone here today, so anxiety levels are extremely high. But I do know that they are all here because I have a passion for angling, wildlife and well-being, such as myself. Um, and I think we'll get on all right. <laughs> And Piscator fans, do you want to know the irony of all of that? The breaking of the rod, the unluckiness. Look what I've just found. <laughs> A four-leaf clover. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes, so I'm here today in the company of one Mr. Jack Perks, famed for his underwater wildlife photography and filming. Um, he does all sorts of things for the BBC. People can buy all of his stuff, actually, but he does a lot of stuff for BBC. I've seen a lot of his on um, Spring Watch and uh, what's the other one, like the One Show, um, showcasing the underwater fishes. Uh, we're here because of him today. He's got, um, we, we crowdfunded, um, or all of us, I suppose, helped to crowdfund his new project, his new angling film. Um, is it Britain's Hidden Fishes? He'll correct me on that if I get it wrong. And um, yeah, so we're all here as part of a little light-hearted competition to see how many mini species we can get. There's all sorts of prizes, prizes for the smallest fish, biggest fish, prettiest gudgeon, um, all sorts. Also joined by one Mr. Dr. Mark Everard, or Dr. Redfin, as um, anglers will know him. Um, he's famed for his um, love of mini species, very much like me, and his um, ability to catch some of the most amazing roach of all sorts of sizes that you'll ever see. Um, there's, I think there's, he said there's nine of us from the little, the little pre-meeting, something like that. So it should be a lovely day. Um, I've managed, uh, a very lovely angler has managed to um, give me his float rod for the day, <laughs> having lost mine. <laughs> um, uh, so I've got to hope my luck doesn't, um, doesn't run out with this because uh, I'll be owing him a lot of money. <laughs> um, and I gave him the um, the lucky four-leaf clover uh, because it clearly isn't working for me already. Uh, so hopefully he'll win some some prizes with it. Uh, oh, we've all stopped just up ahead. Oh. <laughs> Have a look. Oh, look at that. First drop in. Fantastic. There you go, buddy. That's it. Oh, jealous. Oh. Fantastic. I'll put you on my hot spot, though, Dom. <laughs> That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, mate. If you pop it, you pop in the lab, in the bucket, and oh. oh well. <laughs> got two. Got two trays, depending on what size you want. Well. <laughs> so. How much is your unhooking nuts? I know. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah, hooking nuts is ounces. Oh, got a little. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. This is sensitive. Sort of thing where you blow on it and it doubles. In yeah, 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 yeah. You have to be very careful with them. <laughs> Probably picks up all the drops of water as well. It also counts. Oh, rejoice. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Extra bit of grass for an extra zero point. <laughs> the rough master. What we call worse. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> Half an ounce. Is it ounces? Yeah, it's in ounces, yeah. <laughs> How much do those scales cost us about a inch? Um, I think it was like about. Ten pounds, something oh, really? like that. Yeah, with the postage and stuff. Yeah. That's like this, that's eBay this, job, oh, that's this point. Oh, that's it because it's in ounces. Just on. Um, yeah, it's an ounce. Um, you can check the grams and whatever you want on there. Um, no, it was on uh, Amazon, I think. Thinking about it, yeah. Okay. Oh, you have had a rudder. Well, I've 
had rad, I've had roach, I've had rad roach hybrid. Okay. Silver bream, bronzy bream. Rough. All right, well, you'd probably be winning. Well, uh, yeah, except. I'm really not counting. It's no, a bit no. like last time, you know, I, I had silly prize. Richard, I think Pete's on five. Oh, I'm ahead of that. Taking a bit of time away from the madding crowds. Oh, I've got my waistcoat on to keep my bits in, but it's so full at the front, it's pulling down a little bit, it's a bit annoying. Uh, yeah, I've broken away from the group for a little while to see if I can snag a few little sneaky species on the side. I'm up to four species so far. I've had a roach, a perch, a ruff, and a rudd. Um, just fishing alongside um, Mark, Mark Everard. And he's had um, a bream and a silver bream. So, I've had a little quiet spot here and I've just popped out a little bit of ground bait. Um, swinging out a couple of maggots on my borrowed rod. <laughs> and um, let's see what turns up in the middle. <clears throat> I've been fishing very much in the margins, uh, hence why I've been catching the perch and the rough. I'm going to go a bit further out and see what there is. I've left Jack, hopefully, in the swim where I was catching those little rough. Because uh, he hasn't caught one in, I think he said, like, 15 years. So I did a, a runner so that he could uh, hopefully nip into that swim and catch himself a rough for the first time in a very long time. Oh, there's a bite. What have we got here? It's lively. Oh, I don't know. Looks like a roach to me. Whoop. There we go. Of course, one of the benefits of having Dr. Mark Everard with you is if you're ever not sure of the species of the fish, <laughs> he can pretty much um, tell you what it is. I mean, the confusion with roach, of course, um, is they could have it could be a hybrid. It could be a, a roach bream hybrid. It could be a roach rud hybrid. You can get a rud roach hybrid, and they're all sorts. I'm pretty confident that's a roach. Um, so I won't take a picture for Mark to have a look at. Uh, which could be my failure. It's probably a hybrid and that would be it. We're, I believe we're counting hybrids on this one. I think because there are just so many that we're using that as an extra an extra species, as it were. I think, oop, if I'm confident it's definitely a hybrid, I'm going to take a picture and show him. Um, he could just sight. He does, I don't know how he does it. He might... But you have, normally you have to count the scales along the lateral line. But you can just go, yeah, that's a silver bream. And you're like, <laughs> and you don't ever. Perhaps it's because you just think, well, you don't distrust him. <laughs> I think the whole fact of him being a professor is, you know, you should better trust what he's saying, <laughs> especially opposed to me. Um, Dominic Garnett's shown up. Um, do some. Oh, there we go. So there's no shortage of fish here. There we go. Bloody blue sheen to these roach. This is definitely a roach. No question about that. Uh, he's doing some bits for the Angling Times. Um, he's been using my mini scales. <laughs> um, hopefully I've won a few people over to my mini scales on uh, this trip. I think um, that's something certainly Mark will be getting. Um, it's just nice to know sometimes how big that gudgeon is or how big that minnow is. Not a lot of people have um, record, personal best or record fish for them uh, if it's a mini species, mostly because the scales are so big you can't weigh the tiddlers on. But if you buy the small scales, it's the way to go. Again, I'm pretty confident that's a, that's a roach. Never mind. Oh, I've got a, a frog hopper on my trousers. Let's see if I can get a picture of it. Hopefully I got a picture of the frog hopper to uh, be able to show you on the screen. If not, I'll find one on Google so you know what one looks like. Oops. Interesting little insect. They sort of, um, well they hop for a start, they've got a massive great big bounce. That one when I touched it just leapt, like, the equivalent of miles to a poor little uh, insect like that I suppose. Um, but they, they're strange, they make, sometimes if you, if you've ever been looking through long grass and you see what looks like spit, it's like little 
foamy bubbles, white bubbles, like someone has just gone and just gobbed onto the variety. Oh, sometimes that is what it is, and that's disgusting. But particularly around like a stem of the grass, you'll sometimes see them around the top. If I see some, I'll probably. Mm, there's a frog hopper, there's bound to be. Yeah, but I think it's called cuckoo spit or something like that, anyway. And um, the frog hopper lays its uh, eggs in that, which is quite interesting. Lovely little uh, insect. You don't often see the frog hopper itself, you often see that like, little sort of bit of spit on side the, uh, the grasses. Uh, one of the things today is because, um, you know, it is wildlife as well, we are spotting a load of wildlife. Um, I mean, Jack pretty much showed up and bam, there was a raven flying over the <laughs> car park. But he's well versed in spotting such things. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, I don't know. I might need a net for this one. So my net is currently positioned by a big mass of dog poo. Clean up after yourself, devises. Well, not yourself necessarily. Well, I hope it's not. But certainly a dog. Oh, what a lovely fish. Look at that. There's a hell of a breeze going through now, which is finding it tricky. I've just got fishing with a little pole float because I need to see the bites really clearly. Fishing really tiny fish. Yeah, I've just noticed I'm sat on the bank here. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you. Um, right there. And my feet are literally in the water. Oh, I've got wet feet. What's it? Oh. It is not a spot to dangle your feet in. One of the locks must have opened up because the flow has just started to happen again. Still. It's like suddenly becoming a river fishing session. Whoops, whoops, whoops. In you go, fella. Whooping. There we go. Ooh. I've got a rope. This one's going mad. I'll tell you what. The fishing on the Kennet and Avon Canal. Absolutely fantastic. I know we've got a little friendly competition going on, but I've almost forgotten about that, to be honest. It's just so, so nice. So nice. <laughs> Lovely little perch on the maggots. No bream yet, but I'm happy to catch fish like this all day. Lovely. Uh, moving on again. No bream in that swim. Well, there probably are, but I didn't catch it here through the roach. Who we got up here? We've got Jack and... Dom and his wife and child up here. Hopefully they've caught some rough out of my swim. I vacated my swim so that Jack could use it, but we'll see. There we all are. Let's see what's going down. Yeah, Rich, a couple of Rich and Peter have. Have you got those little scales again? Yeah, I do. My famous scales. On there. <laughs> that is a scale worm fish, isn't it? I mean, that's got to be a couple of ounces, isn't it? Or more? I don't know. I don't know. What's your guess? You get the big tray on. I'm I, used to I reckon that is, that's probably 30, 35 grams, I'd say. Oh, yeah, take him off a bit. Take, take him off again. He did quite oh, a, sorry. That's right, a bit. That's too eager. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. 0 0.97 ounces. Whatever that means in grams. That's what I thought I had. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, sorry, you're so Wipe the ounce of coke off. That's <laughs> what? So you may ask yourself, how's your anxiety coming along, Steve? Well, it's cured, of course. A lot of it is just, you know, having something in common with someone. Um, everyone here is absolutely lovely. Happy to chat, happy to talk. 
we will have fishing in common. We're all here to catch fish. Oh, little perch. Hey, oh, into the net and back in the water. Um, so it's, it's great having that in common. Uh, nature as well and wildlife. We've been chatting all, all day uh, between the group of us about everything we've seen and everything we've caught and just life in general. It's really, really nice. Fishing is one of the ultimate tonics for um, anxiety because it's so peaceful. Everyone's there because they want to have a bit of peace and quiet. And it's, it's perfect. It really should be prescribed. Ooh. Suffering with anxiety? Go fishing. I mean, I speak of this from a very male-centric point of view because, I don't know if you've noticed, by the beard, I am male. But men aren't very good at opening up about their feelings. Um, and even less so about something like anxiety. Because it's not, you know, it, despite it being more recognised, it's not something that people really discuss. You know, oh, I'm anxious, or, you know, you, you don't really notice notice it in men they try and hide it best they can and I guess I'm pretty good at that as well I put a face on and I'm like hey it's me the fashion of Piscator Steve you know but deep down I'm, I'm butterflies I, 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 I'm like oh I can't do this I can't do this but not when you're fishing everything goes out of your mind it's just you outside and the float and that's it and if other people are there doing it that exact same thing you're going to get on like a house on fire. Oh, Ooh, a little roach. Oh, <laughs> come on. Um, uh, chuck some more maggots back in. There we go. And I have no doubt that some of the people here today are, you know, just as anxious as I am about meeting people. Um, and you know, conversing and well, hey, <laughs> he almost leapt out the water. Conversing in that sense, uh, or you know, gathering together in that sense. Oh, I sort of ping off the hook, and they're everywhere. Luckily, it's lovely, soft um, reeds I'm sat on here. Okay, get some more, more maggots. I'm still on the um. The bream hunt. Uh, this is the swim I was in earlier on with uh, Jack, Dom, and Mark. And as I left, Jack's been telling me that they've been catching quite a lot of bream. I get here, of course, and there's no bream. Um, and of course, once you've made friends with people, um, the next time you go out with the same people, it's a little bit less anxious for you and so on and so on some of the um oops, no. some of, some of the closest friends i've made is through angling um particularly down like angler's paradise where we go down for the competitions and there's the same regulars which turn up and um you know it, it's not anxious going there at all anymore although the first trip definitely was i um oops. I 100% wanted to uh, shut myself out of the way so that no one could see me. And I think I near enough did, to be fair. But it wasn't entirely my fault. I was very ill the first time I went to Angler's Paradise. <laughs> I was ill when I got there and I was ill when I left. Um, so I did, I did become a bit of a recluse that week. Um, but gradually, gradually it builds up and the more confident you get with it, the better it is. It's not like a crazy situation. I mean, you know, going down the pub's hard enough sometimes. There's always going to be lots, lots of strangers there. Uh, but you have the social lubricant of alcohol to help you out, of course. Um, you know what? Fish disappeared here now. I don't know what's going on. Put some more maggots in. Come on, Steve. Bait, bait, bait. Um, but yeah, my anxiety. I got my anxiety before I turned up here, of course. But it's completely washed away with the water now. Completely washed away. It happens every time. 
if ever you suffer with anxiety or have any troubles, angling is the place to do it. Well, not do it, not get anxious, but to get clear of all that ang angst. Angst? Angst? Woohoo, what have we got here? It's a very splashy fish. Oh, another roach. Just can't seem to get away from the roach today. Oh, and my little pink um, disgorger. You know, the one that's bright pink, I'll never ever lose it. Gone. I had to borrow a disgorger. <laughs> it's not going well for me today. I had to borrow a, dis a disgorger for another angler. I borrowed rod, borrowed disgorger. If only there was a way to borrow the fish. That's why I could win the mini species competition. But I'm stuck on, I'm stuck on four at the moment and uh, cannot move from that position. Ah, there was no bream there. Reckon the lads are having me on. Anyway, I'm gonna move back down, moved all the way up, move back down, see where everyone else is fishing, see what they've been catching, and hopefully catch ooh, a couple of bream maybe, maybe a, a gudgeon, uh, but if not, some more silver fish that I've been catching so far. I'll be very pleased. Let's just get moving. Five few final, nah, final few hours. Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Coming up to four o'clock, which is the weigh-in time. Now I've only had the fourth piece. I, I was dying to get that bream. I was um, sat there with the, the main tuition guy who knows this place for like the back of his hand. He's been fishing here for three years, and boy, he was catching some fish. He knows this place like the back of his hand, but we couldn't winkle out a little bream, which is a shame. Uh, but I tell you what, I didn't half learn a lot from him. Definitely. I'll, again, I'll pop a link down in the in the bottom there, and uh, I think it's Weymouth Way, uh, the top of my memory. You'll look, you'll you'll look down and see and see how wrong I was or right I was. Um, but what a nice guy! What a nice guy! I need to get out with him at some point, so he can teach me how to catch some sea fish, um, especially like on light light raw LRF. Just say LRF. I can't spit it out. Uh, look, here's the team. <laughs> Here they all are. <laughs> well done, that man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what nice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Rough on the dial. I did lose a pipe. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it for the great fishing challenge here at Devizes on the Kennet and Avon Canal. The guys are just tossing up all the prizes. Um, it's been a really, really nice time. I didn't catch as many fish as I'd hoped, but I had way more fun than I expected. Thank you very much for joining me, the passionate Piscator here with Jack Perks and Dominic Garnett and Mark Everard and the rest of the team. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to go home and see if I can find a new um, rod <laughs> on eBay and Amazon. Click like and subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.